Today I'd like to demonstrate a very beautiful flute by the American maker William Hall and Son. William Hall was uh, one of the most important sort of kingpin characters in American wind instrument making. He, besides his own company, William Hall and Son, which made very fine instruments, he was a partner in the very large firm of Firth Hall and Pond. They were the largest manufacturer of American woodwind instruments in the 1830s and 40s. Hall worked for the famous maker Edward Riley, um, who was often thought of as the first important maker of flutes in the United States, although he wasn't really the first person to make them, but he maybe was the first commercial success. And uh, Hall ended up marrying his daughter. This was very much in the fashion of the European makers, flute makers, who all seemed to marry the children of other flute makers. Um, in 1833 is when he started up uh, Firth Hall and Pond. And earlier than that, in 1821, he had a company called Firth and Hall, uh, who also made some very fine flutes. This flute is probably from about 1848, early in the days of William Hall and Son. It's special in a number of ways. Uh, like many American flutes, it's modeled on the English concept of flute making, not the German or the French concepts. And as is especially unusual in American flutes, uh, William Hall adopted some of Nicholson's ideas of the larger finger holes and tone holes. Now, by comparison to a large hold English flute or a kind of a radical American Nicholson flute like the flutes of Crosby, this um, is still quite large. So this hole in particular, this hole is larger. The embouchure hole is a little bit larger and rounder. It makes for a little bit more open sound, a fairly strong sound. Some notes in particular that are really different are the, the low G on the flute. Often on small hole flutes, the low G is kind of soft and sometimes it isn't really stable, but on a flute like this, you can get a really hard um, Nicholson-esque sound on that note and on uh, others. Also, the, the F-sharp, which on most flutes requires the use of the F key in order to not be flat, is not really affected very much by the, the key. Even, even without the little finger, it, I think with the little finger it's like one cent and without the little finger it's like two cents. So it is really not necessary to use this finger all the time when you play up sharps. Um, <clears throat> confusingly for me is the fact that this flute is probably designed that the key is down for E. And as a Baroque flutist I train long and hard to never do that and to teach my students that. So it always feels a little odd. The flute has two pewter plugs. C sharp and C. In this case, they they do actually work. They're a little bit sticky, but they they do work. Uh, so it's it's quite a nice flute. I think the tuning is good. As with all flutes, there are little peculiarities about which fingering to use, uh, and the pitch is also very nice. I think it will play quite perfectly at A440, um, pulled out only a, a little bit. So you could play a little bit over 440 and probably all the way down to about 430. Um, so quite, quite a versatile flute. For the demonstration, I'll play some little pieces from the Dressler Selected Beauties for the Flute, which I've used a number of times uh, on different demonstrations. They're, they're nice flutes, especially for for flutes in the English character. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> 